Joe, welcome. It's great to have you here today. Thanks for joining me. What is OIT's role inside VA to help the organizations, uh, VBA, VHA, and cemeteries harness the data that they have coordinate the exchange if necessary inside the organization and so on. Welcome. Yeah, I think this is a, that's a question we get a lot, right? Where, where does a, uh, a service provider that is really tackling very different challenges um, focus on customer outcomes, right? So what do we do from a data perspective is that we are providing uh, a federated enterprise platform and the Summit data platform. We're providing the um, experience and knowledge and skills to tell people both within OIT and in our business partners, hey, this is how you solve for data at enterprise scale. Uh, this is how we go out and identify authoritative systems. This is how we catalog them. This is how we build curation pipelines so that people understand when they're using a particular enterprise data asset, that it really does represent what they think it does and that it ties back to a transactional system that was very much involved in the business relationship with a veteran, their family member, a caregiver, et cetera. Because at the end of the day, we're using data as an accelerator across the department mm -hmm. to build seamless veteran interactions. Mm -hmm. That's what we want to do as a service provider. We want to build great IT products that make outcomes better for veterans. That seamless idea is an interesting one to me, too, because my understanding from talking to some of your colleagues at VA is that you want that to be seamless inside the organization, too. It's not just for folks that are coming to VA from outside, whether it's caregivers or, or uh, folks that you're, the vets you're supporting. Absolutely. When you look at the products that we're building across the department, right, master data is important to that. Um, ensuring that a veteran only has to update their address information once with the department is huge. Uh, you know, boasts accuracy. It's respectful of the veteran's time. It makes sense in the digital age that we live in. Um, and that means that you're integrating with other service providers internally. And then that's from a transactional perspective. But then if you look at the analytics side of the house, there are pockets of interest across each of the administrations you mentioned, the staff offices that support them, that simply just need to know what's going on in the rest of the department to plan their, their workforce capacities, build new facilities, um, think about the impact of policy changes and laws on the rest of the department. And that becomes very much an internal play, right, for, for using those data assets. So absolutely right. Um, we're an enabler not just for those external transactions, but to drive efficiencies inside the department. How much, and I don't, I'm not asking for specific percentages, but how much of the work that you and your colleagues do on data in OIT is strategic and how much of it is nitty gritty, really tactical stuff about data standards and the infrastructure, the pipes that move the data and so on? So, so a healthy balance, right? If you look at the VA strategic priorities, we want to treat data as a strategic asset. And that means you have to have high reliability in the data that we curate, which means you spend a lot of time in the nitty gritty with some of those transactional systems, ensuring that they represent those business processes for the department. VA Profile is a great example of that, where that is executed from my area, uh, where it's very transactional, very much master data centric, uh, but it's a key feeder into our analytic, analytics ecosystem because we're talking about all of the core data that you would think about the, about a veteran, where, they're, where they live, where they receive care, what their mailing address is, what their phone number is, et cetera. All of those kind of contact data demographics in one place that served up across the department. So that, I think, is a reference implementation, right, of how you do that, which then leads us to having great patterns, great you know, architectural overviews that say, hey, other teams, this is what's been successful. Mm -hmm. um, you can integrate with this because obviously it solves a need that we have across the department, but it also sh serves as a bit of a you know, beacon for how do you do this from a transactional practice and how do you integrate it into the analytics ecosystem? You mentioned the strategic plan and I've talked to a number of your colleagues about it. Is that your primary roadmap to determine that you're at the place in the journey that you wanna be and how tightly is that woven to a timeline? So yes and no. I mean, obviously we publish these plans for a reason, right? It's where our leadership wants us to go and that's informed by the administration. It's informed by public policy. It's informed by what Congress has to say, right? And, and we do that as public servants to tell us, hey, this is how we're gonna do that. 
the progress that I think that is even more interesting for us as an organization is the fact that we do so much measurement around the experience for veterans mm -hmm. and for employees. And I think that's a, even a better barometer, you know, in, in a day-to-day, -day, micro level, how are we really executing towards that strategic plan is, are we moving the needle on those experiences? Um, so there's, there's a balance there, of course. You have to have a long-term strategy. You have to have a roadmap. You have to know where you're going if you're going to get anywhere of value. Uh, but measuring it incrementally, right, in terms of not only what we're delivering from an IT product perspective, but how satisfied are people with those products? What do those feedback loops look like? Uh, are they positive? Are they negative? Are they indifferent? Right? Um, all of those are valuable, <laughs> and, and all of them are reintegrated into what we do. And then, of course, that's a life cycle of informing the next iteration of the strategic plan. Mm -hmm. is, is measuring those or responding to those indicators as simple as if the scores are going up, you keep doing that more of that. And if they're going down, you do less of that or do it different, or is it more complicated? I think you have to take that into the context of the service that's being provided, uh, the external uh, factors that are, are at play, whether that's um, different changing, you know, the aging veteran population, uh, veterans coming from different walks of life, uh, things like the PACT Act that have changed the priorities for what we're tackling. Uh, for the veteran population. So I think it, it, there's a lot more calculus involved than just say, uh, we swept the floor and it's clean, so we're going to keep doing that. Yeah. Right? It's more of a uh, measuring the structural viability of the building that holds that floor. And then how do we learn from that to build uh, great structures in the future, I think would be a, a, probably a little bit more nuanced version of that. What are you laying the groundwork for now that may not mature for a year or two or you know, whatever the next phase is on your data journey? So I think if you look at the VA's data journey, it really began in earnest uh, when the electronic healthcare record was uh, pioneered by the department years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you look at that journey of hey, how do we build enterprise level reporting from across a very large healthcare system, and then how do you do that for a benefits organization? How do you do that for a place that's met, uh, managing cemetery space? providing life insurance, VA home loans, think about all these things that we do um, that, that are singular companies, right? In other places in a, in a full industry vertical. Um, so when we, we look at where we're going long-term, obviously we want to build, we, we don't want to lose capability that we have today from an operational reporting perspective, but we want to get ready for the ML AI generation. Right? And you can only do that with great data management. So if you don't know where your data comes from, if you don't know what it represents, you're wasting your time with AI. Um, so, in the next couple of years, I think that we're going to mature those practices across the department and get them into more quarters uh, to unlock more data that we maybe didn't necessarily have great eyes on. Uh, because it, in a singular reporting descriptive analytics world, probably wasn't that interesting. Taken as a whole with everything else that we know about the veterans and the departments, right, it becomes very interesting and those become additive to our, our training set for those AI solutions down the road. Do you think that you have, as an agency, your arms around everything that you have now? Because that's taken a lot of agencies a long time to just even know what all's out there to be able to consider. So we've made a lot of strides with our enterprise data catalog uh, program. And what that's really doing for us is ensuring that you know, working with the Data Governance Council, we've got good eyes on uh, the transactional systems that are out there, mm -hmm. the various systems that are either powering websites, they're powering internal applications, but mapping them to the business processes that are um, identified across the department. How do we ensure that we're making great decisions about those being authoritative for that process? How do we catalog that? How do we make that broadly accessible to the VA uh, employee population, contractor population for that mm -hmm. matter, um, so that we understand uh, the coverage of that. And I would think that in the last two years, we've made significant strides on that in, 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 for two reasons. Uh, one, we're modernizing a lot. Uh, we have, we've got broad modernization programs in place at VA. Whenever you start modernizing, you, you inherently have to do a study of where you are today, how it's working, um, you know, what data is flowing through, what systems, how they're interconnected, which really informs a lot of that, right, in terms of a data asset inventory. And then the second part is really just doubling down on being a high reliability organization. Uh, if you look at all of the architectural pieces that we track um, in various systems at VA, we've got good eyes on what IT systems are out there. We've made great inroads in partnering 
with the business to understand what they were doing from more of a business directed IT over the years um, and integrating that into the same governance framework that OIT uses for our own products. Um, so that's been very important to that. So I would say that, you know, is, is the journey ever complete? Of course not. Um, it's always going to evolve. There's always going to be something new that we have to figure out how to put into our, how we track architecture, how we track data assets. Um, but as an organization, and, you know, in my time here, I mean, I think over the last couple of years, we've made significant progress and I, and I believe we will continue to. And as we modernize and build new things and integrate new SaaS products uh, from the outside, we're going to start at, hey, we need to know what this represents. We need to know how this integrates with the rest of our data ecosystem. So we get that force multiplier as well. Thank you very much for the insight. Thanks for taking time to come Thank and you. do this on a Monday appreciate morning. We really appreciate it, Joe. Thanks for having me. Happy to do it.